from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, November the 15th, 2022. We open with a deadly terror rampage this morning in the West Bank city of Ariel that left three people dead and three seriously injured. According to the IDF, an 18-year-old Palestinian terrorist arrived in the morning at the entrance gate of the Ariel Industrial Area, where he reportedly was employed, and stabbed a citizen said to be a security guard. From there, he continued to a nearby gas station and stabbed and killed two people and seriously injured a third. He then fled in a stolen vehicle where he crashed into other vehicles and deliberately ran over a civilian, killing him. He stabbed another civilian on the highway before driving off in another stolen vehicle, driving reportedly against traffic, crashing into more cars before he got out and was shot and killed by soldiers in the area. IDF forces were searching for any accomplices. The victim of the car ramming was named later as 50-year-old Tamir Avichai. One of the stabbing victims was named as new immigrant to Israel, Michael Ladigin, and the third victim was named as 59-year-old Moti Ashkenazi. Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid sent his deepest condolences to the families and said we are relentlessly fighting terrorism. Our security forces are working around the clock to protect the citizens of Israel and target terrorist infrastructure anytime, anywhere. U.S. Ambassador to Israel Tom Nide said he was horrified by the rampage. My heart goes out to the grieving families and those injured. The senseless violence needs to stop. Israel said it would not cooperate with a reported FBI investigation into the death of Palestinian-American journalist Shirin Abu Akleh this past May during an intense gun battle in Jenin. If you recall, the IDF concluded in its probe back in September that while not possible to unequivocally determine the source of the gunfire that killed the veteran journalist, there is a high probability that Abu Akleh was accidentally hit by IDF gunfire, fired towards suspects identified as armed Palestinian gunmen during an exchange of fire in which life-threatening, widespread, and indiscriminate shots were fired toward IDF soldiers. And back in July, a U.S. government probe reached a similar conclusion with U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price saying that gunfire from IDF positions was likely responsible for the death of Shirin Abu Akleh. He said the USSC found no reason to believe that this was intentional, but rather the result of tragic circumstances. Well, with the apparent FBI probe, Israel's defense minister, Benny Gantz, said he conveyed to U.S. representatives that Israel will not cooperate with an external investigation. He said the decision taken by the U.S. Justice Department to conduct an investigation into the tragic passing of Shirin Abu Akleh is a mistake. Lapid was cited by the Times of Israel saying that IDF soldiers will not be interrogated by the FBI or by any foreign body or foreign country, however friendly. The IDF, he said, is a moral and values-based army. IDF soldiers and commanders defend the state of Israel, thoroughly investigate every aberrant incident, and are committed to the values of democracy and its laws. Well, Israel's new Knesset was sworn in today at the country's parliament in Jerusalem. President Isaac Herzog addressed the lawmakers, urging open dialogue and respectful discourse as they serve. Cited by Hebrew media saying that the citizens of Israel today are proud of their country but are exhausted from the infighting and its fallout and told the lawmakers of their most important mission, the unity, the cohesion, the empowerment of the common, he said, the understanding that we are brothers who share a bond of destiny to live here together. The 120 members of Israel's 25th Knesset stood one by one as their names were called in alphabetical order today and said the words, Ani nishba, I swear. The ceremony concluding with the singing of Israel's national anthem, Hatikva, the Hope.
Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, November the 15th at 7 o'clock. Rabbi Emil Hirsch talks about anti-Semitism on college campuses. At 8, Michal Rimon and Yuval Wagner of Access Israel describe how their organization is helping to evacuate elderly people and people with disabilities from Ukraine. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Michael and Susan Ashner on L'Chaim. At 10, a look at human equality in the Torah. And coming up next, it's the Dur Show. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, November the 15th, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.